I think that in the revival of the Australian cinema in the 70s, there was a lot of looking back to our history. I mentioned um, My Brilliant Career or The Getting of Wisdom could be examples of that. Breaker Morant, Gallipoli, there was a lot of that. And I hope that that is something that continues, but done in a way that makes sense to your generation. I think the craftsmanship of Australia is worldwide recognised. Hence, so much talent that's going to work even in Hollywood. And that goes for the people in front of the screen as much as behind. Uh, the craftsmanship is, uh, is incredible. Anywhere I come, everyone is agreeing on that. Very high standards of craftsmanship. Um, when it comes down to the authenticity of generating their own products, their own films and, you know, the indie film and all that kind of stuff, it's a bit, it's, it's a, it comes in, uh, there is another territory, suddenly. And that's a bit of a pity, I think. The Australian screen industries as that we're now surrounded by, in many ways the institutions are a, a creation of the 1970s and there was something that my generation, the baby boom generation, but also the generation just before me, the generation born at the end of the 1930s and in the Second World War, it's what they pushed for. Now, a lot of those people are now coming to the end of their working lives. And I think it's a real question and a very interesting question. What kind of industry does your generation want? What kind of industry are you going to kind of fight for? If you're not fluent in the landscape, not just the current landscape of film and TV, but also in the history and the, the giants that have gone before you and what they've achieved, Good luck with being in meetings in Hollywood. And I do regret enormously that um, within the States, and Queensland is not different there, there is not more um, room for development. So, and that's not because I'm a head of a film school and I'm uh, also a person who started in an incubator program for, for uh, young filmmakers and things like that. Uh, it is because there is not enough money going to development and not necessarily all these films need to be made but there need to be a lot of product into development and I think there needs to be much more spending there and so when I recently read that uh, now because of the cuts there is not going to be any money anymore for the incoming filmmakers that was an incredibly heavily, what the, what's the right word? It's a slap in the face, actually. So um, I take this very personal. It's, a, it's something that I really regret. I wrote straight away to the president of the ADG who himself complained about it. I said, if you need me, I'm there because I think this is, this is bad, bad language. I think Australian content creators have quite rightly established a global reputation for excellence. And so they've been very nimble and very clever and very creative in producing superb children's television over the last 30 years, particularly live action drama. So we've seen some really lovely and successful series that have not only worked really well in Australia, but have sold all over the world. So, you know, beginning as early as shows like Round the Twist, and then more recently, H2O Just Had Water, Mako Mermaids, Dance Academy, I mean, there's a whole list of really top quality shows that content creators have made that have done well in Australia, but done even better in international markets. Australians use landscape really well. Uh, in, in part, this comes out of, you know, critics writing about it so much, but it's also part of the fact that, you know, Australian filmmakers are working with the light and the locations that we have. But we really do shoot uh, location um, location films really well and use you know the colours and the light um, of the outback well and and tell stories um, well using that. So um, that's definitely something that should continue. But again, it's more a question of that Australian accent. Australian filmmakers over the years, regardless of the genre or the format that they're working with, have a quirky approach to telling screen stories. So whether it's shooting an action film in terms of the way they shoot the action or the way they tell a comedy or a drama, 
is, is unique and always a little bit different to, to other Anglophone countries like America or the United Kingdom. So I, I think um, it's more a question of encouraging um, and maintaining um, a vibrant screen culture and that, that quirky accent will continue, which produces unique and distinct screen content for the marketplace. I think with the idea of an Australian national cinema, each generation has to reinterpret the kind of um, what it is that you're about and then be able to articulate it and fight for it and, and create it. I co-created a TV series called Raw FM, which was screened in the 90s on the ABC. Actually did better overseas than it did in Australia. It was a very controversial series for a lot of reasons and we were just given the worst time in the press because uh, the producer was spending over $100,000 an episode, which hadn't been done before in Australian TV. And uh, a lot of people thought this was just outrageous. And yet in America, the shows that we all watch and admire, they're spending over a million per episode. I love films that have a kind of a raw energy to them. I think of films like Going Down in 1983, kind of paper film of, of four young women in just one night before one of them goes overseas and done on a very low budget. I love to see stuff done in at all different kind of budget levels. And I think it's this big thing about tall poppy stuff that like in America people just don't understand why we do that. But uh, I hate it and I wish we would stop because I think a lot of especially young filmmakers shoot themselves in the foot by not allowing themselves to embrace the great things that have gone before them and to learn from the people that have achieved and done great things before them. The best way to um, predict the future is to, to invent it, to create it. And I think that that's something that um, I would really, really encourage um, film graduates and film students and filmmakers to think about. You know, what kind of industry do you want? Let's go out and make it.